Hi friends, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio. You know, while I'm waiting for some supplies to arrive to continue on with the multi-phase Big Thunder Mine project, I thought I'd move forward on another little project that I've been thinking about for a long time. An ON18 bobber caboose for the mining tram. Now, if you're unfamiliar with ON18, it's still O-scale, but it's even more of a narrow gauge than ON30 just 18 scale inches between the rails, which is a common uh, mining and industrial gauge. Conveniently, N-scale at 9 millimeters between the rails scales out darn close to 18 inches in O-scale, which means you can use a lot of N-scale components when modeling ON18. Well, the whole thing started with one of these uh, ubiquitous Bachman N-scale bobber cabooses. I was looking at one one day and thinking, you know, I bet I could make an ON18 caboose out of that that would be truly tiny. So the next step was to head to the drawing board and see if what I was thinking about was even possible. parts I'm really going to use on this is the, uh, the frame. So I can pop it out of here. Body. There we go. Get rid of that. Keep the weight. But I'm going to cut off these um, handrails, this brake wheel, these steps, just about anything really that identifies it as an end scale model. <clears throat> and take these uh, couplers out too. Lose the screw. There we go. Let's find a safe place for this stuff while I work on the rest of it. Now let's start uh, doing a little surgery here. A little in scale ectomy. Boom. Boy, that was easy. I'll be finding little bits of this all over the studio for months to come. It's worth it, though, man. It's worth it. Um, let's see. A little bit more of that. Um, before I paint this, I actually want to completely remove this cast on end beam but i want to leave the coupler pocket so i need to cut around this and then trim that little bit of plastic away because i'm going to replace that with wood so razor saw fortunately this uh, plastic is pretty soft and really uh, easy to work with by the way one of the things i like about these <laughs> Little replaceable blade saws. Uh, I dropped it and broke half the blade off, but the other half is still perfectly usable, so it's still good. Well, after a little more whittling and filing, this is what we're left with. Now I'm ready to cut uh, a couple of end beams for this, but uh, and I want them to be exactly the same length. And my little mini miter box <laughs> has a, uh, a stop, an adjustable stop that you can put in here so you can cut multiple pieces the same, uh, the same length. But unfortunately, I have mislaid it somewhere. So I've improvised with a piece of uh, quarter inch stock taped in there uh, to act as a stop and now I'm just going to go ahead and cut a couple of end beams out of some uh, O scale 4x6. 
Now I need to uh, notch these end beams, remove all of that material so they'll fit down over the coupler pockets. That is basically the fit we're going for. Just like that. Now these end beams are probably going to be painted, but I uh, thought it would be a good idea to get some stain on them too. Just in case. Well, now I can uh, glue these end beams to the frame with a little uh, medium viscosity Cyanoacrylite. I may have mentioned this before, but if you're gluing different materials together using CA um, and one of them is more porous than the other, you always put the CA on the less porous material. And that is just so it won't uh, soak in so fast. Okay, now we'll start putting the side beams on. Okay, let's get some stain on those. Now I can switch to some yellow glue. It's got to be flush because the exterior cladding is going to come down over that side. Each side is going to have a second lateral beam, which uh, Go right up against the edge of this end scale Bachman frame. All right, well, now I can take the completed frame and my drawing over to the computer and um, design some uh, laser cut parts for the car body and for these doors and windows. Well, all right, we got some, uh, some parts here, fresh out of the laser. Got some doors and windows. I cut these out of some uh, 25 thousandth of an inch thick laser board. If you're not familiar with laser board, it is a uh, plastic impregnated pressed cellulose product. So it's kind of like a thin MDF, but it's got a little bit of plastic in it for extra strength and it cuts beautifully on uh, laser cutters. Uh, great for uh, detail parts like that. And then we've got the walls um, for the car body, and these are made out of some uh, 1 16th of an inch thick uh, basswood, uh, some uh, supports for the roof, and some stencils. I made some stencils out of some very, very thin uh, laser board called polyback. And uh, these will be used to stencil the number on to the side of the car. And uh, my plan here is to do a lot of um, paint and finish work on the, uh, on the walls while they're still flat. And then kind of assemble them all together. So, um, so the first thing I'm going to do, first step is I'm going to take a razor saw and add some distress to these uh, scribed on boards. This accentuates the grain and helps with the next step where I'm actually going to um, stain these. Helps the uh, stain soak in. Okay, so now get my uh, wood stain and I'm using a India ink and alcohol stain because I want a gray silvery look to the walls um, underneath the paint where the paint has worn away. You'll be able to see this gray silvery look. Where is that? There it is. Remember, it's a good idea to do both sides. 
keep the piece from warping. In fact, it's actually a better idea to start on the back. All right, set this stuff aside to dry. Starting on the doors and windows, and as is often the case with these laser cut components, uh, these will be built up in layers. Doors are two layers plus a door frame. Sometimes I'll uh, cut a small piece of wood uh, at an angle like that to get in there and get those extra glue blobs out of the corners. Now on these uh, double hung windows, they're not going to be assembled until after they're painted. So I just need to get them off the backing sheet and clean up any nubs before painting them. And now I'm just going to paint these parts with some Rust-Oleum Camouflage Dark Brown. Now this is uh, some genuine lead shot. And I know lead is dangerous. You don't want to eat it. You don't want to breathe it into your lungs. And you don't want to spend too much time handling it. And I will, uh, of course, wash my hands very thoroughly after I'm done here. Um, but it is also ideal, flatten it out a little bit, for adding a little bit of more weight to this car. Should be able to just uh, attach these with some a couple of blobs of thick CA. On second thought, I think one of these is probably more than enough weight. I put two of them on there and it was so heavy, <laughs> the car barely moved. So let's do this one on here. Yeah, that's nice. Now I'm going to take some of this. Uh, apple barrel khaki and some granite gray and dry brush it onto these door and window frames. Start down the bottom of the door. I'm just using some clear acetate from my scrap box to glaze these. These are very small doors by the way. Uh, 24 by 72 inches uh, at scale. And a standard door, usually 80 inches tall. So this caboose is for uh, we only you know only short conductors need apply. Glazing like this is generally better to smear than to blob the glue, and that's because when you press down the glazing, then the glue won't squeeze out into the window area. Okay. Let that glue set up for a minute, then I'll just trim it off at the top. Now I can glue the lower sashes into the window frames. Let's get a fresh, fresh blob of glue here. Well, our stain is nice and dry now, but before I move on to the, the painting step, I'm going to do a little quick assembly on these walls. This, um, this piece is an extra brace for the curved roof, like so. Now I've got some um, 4x4s to act as or corner posts. So when these walls go together, it gives you a larger gluing surface, makes a more secure corner. A 
Now to paint these pieces, I've got some uh, Montana Colors uh, flat light yellow. Um, but I'm going to do a couple of little techniques uh, to uh, make the paint look kind of old and cracked and weathered uh, and faded out towards the bottom here. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, stipple on some of this. This is some art masking fluid, which is used uh, in watercolors. It's basically a liquid latex and um, often uh, sold under the name frisket. You might see it uh, called that. This is also known as the old uh, rubber cement trick. You could use rubber cement to do this. You just kind of blot it on here and there. And it acts as a resist. And then what's going to happen is when you paint over that, after the paint dries, you'll be able to peel this off. And it'll take the paint with it. I'm just doing it down towards the bottom here. And the second technique I'm going to use, I'm going to use what's known as a soft mask. And that is basically just a piece of torn paper, like so. And when you spray, you keep it raised, elevated above the surface, so it creates a soft, gradiated kind of line. Uh, old airbrushing trick. Here goes nothing. So, long story short, <laughs> I screwed up. Um, after the cut, I uh, went back with the yellow one more time because I, I thought it needed to be a little bit richer, you know, that rich color I wanted. Um, and I put the mask too close uh, to the work. So now I've got a harder line there than I wanted, which is a shame because it's it's a... It's a totally legitimate technique. It's a great technique. Um, but now, get to figure out how to fix that. So, win-win, I guess. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is use an eraser to take off that masking fluid that we put on. Get an idea what that looks like. Well, that might be enough. That might be enough to fix this. All right. All is not lost. In fact, I think all is almost well, uh, other than the fact that I broke this piece six ways to Sunday. I can glue that back together, no problem. Um, but once I took the, uh, the masking fluid off, uh, using the eraser, it just totally, yeah, it just... It, it looks, it looks the way I wanted it to look. <laughs> if I'm being inarticulate, but yeah, that's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it turned out fine. Um, now, I think even before I glue this back together, I'm going to use the uh, stencils that I created to add the numbers to this car. And these are actually designed to fit like right there so I can line it up perfectly with the top and the bottom on both of these pieces, but I need to, um, I'm going to spray some um, uh, spray adhesive on the backs of these. This stuff right here, this uh, Super 77 spray adhesive. So let me get some, some of that on the back of these real quick. Okay, I did this just a real light spray of that on the back because I don't want it full strength. I just wanted enough to hold that mask down on the surface. Uh, that stencil, I mean. Now I want to do even more. I'll put this, use my apron to take most of the stick them off. I'll line that up on there, top and bottom. Well, that would be bad, huh? I almost, I almost did six. <laughs> Instead of nine. Should have marked which side was the top. Oh boy. Now I'll just mask off the rest of the edges with some uh, painter's tape. Where's that? So now, a light spray of dark brown over there. Oh, 
Let's see how we did. Oh, 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 yes. Can I get an amen from the congregation? That is beautiful. All right. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. By the way, this is a good skill to have if you uh, build a lot of laser cut kits. Because uh, oftentimes parts do, unfortunately, break. We we're dealing with very thin pieces of basswood and plywood, things like that. So it's a good idea to know how to fix them. Usually just a little carpenter's glue will do the job. Let that dry and nobody will ever know. It'll be our little secret, you and me. Now I can start to carefully apply the doors and windows. There we go. Perfect. These, I'm just going to use some, uh, some CA on the back. And now I've got some uh, ridiculously tiny and thin door frames. Some little teeny threshold pieces, too. For the windows, I'm just going to paint on some, some Eileen's Tacky Glue. Diluted it with some water, so... I can move it around. Now the window frames, I think. Now I can put the four sides together. Start here. Now we find out if I measured everything right. Let's see if the body fits on the frame. Oh. <gasps> like a glove. Whoa. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about. I want to add some uh, blinds, not to the windows. But uh, to the doors here, just uh, partially, partially closed, not closed all the way. And I'm using, once again, I'm using the old Manila file folder paper and green Sharpie trick. There we go. I think I'm only going to need one more of these roof braces. It's such a short car. Put it right in the middle. Now I need a couple of boards here running along the top here. Support the roof as it comes over. And I'm just going to make those out of some, uh, some scale 2x6.
Well, now I want to chamfer the edges or round them off, but I want them both to match. So I've uh, clamped both of the boards together, and I'll just use my uh, sanding block to round them both off at the same time. Now I am ready to install the roof. And you know, I thought about doing a roof, uh, doing a laser cut piece out of some thin laser board. Um, but in the end, I've decided to do it in the same way uh, that the prototypes did, uh, board by board. So I just cut some scale one by eight boards to length, painted them underneath, and now start at each end uh, at both sides and kind of work my way towards the middle. And the nice thing about doing it this way is that when I uh, paper the roof, I'm probably going to use some black construction paper, you'll pick up the seams, the, 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 uh, the look of those individual boards will come through the, uh, come through the paper when it's glued down. And that will look cool. I'll touch that over here. Just a just a skosh, not even a smidgen, just a just a tiny little skosh. There we go. Now we do the one on this side. Work our way towards the middle. Right. Now let that glue all dry and then I'll take and sand the ends. So they're all perfectly even and touch everything up. Well, this is about 80% of the way there now. And uh, I'll tell you what I did. You know, uh, last night before I left, I, uh, I took a bunch of photos of the model. And this is something I often do when I get it, you know, close to finished. Uh, I'll take a bunch of pictures and um, then I'll look at the, I'll go home and I'll, I'll, I'll look at the pictures real hard. And... Um, from all different angles to see what the model needs. You know, you can see things in photos that you might not necessarily be able to see when you're just working on it. I think it's because you, you're just, you're too close to it. You're thinking about the next task, you know, what you need to accomplish. Um, and a few things I noticed, uh, it needs a little bit of trim here at the ends. So I uh, created some more laser cut parts I created some uh, trim pieces for the end of the roof, and I also created some steps. You can see those for the side doors and for the uh, end beams on each side. So I'm going to assemble all of these steps and cut all these out, and I'll uh, I'll paint everything and uh, get them on there, and then we'll be about 99% of the way done, I think. So each of these steps. Built up from two pieces. And each of these little steps, <clears throat> these are actually the bigger ones, uh, gets built up and slots in like so. Give it a kick. And then um, these tiny little holes, can you see these? These tiny little holes, they both get tiny little nut bolt washer castings. These are Grantline. I think they're number 99. Nut bolt washer castings. Often used for end scale. That's how small they are. So, I need to build these uh, the two big steps and then I've got the four smaller steps also. I've set up sort of an assembly line jig here for the uh, nut bolt washer castings on these little steps. Um, I've got a piece of foam core with some double stick tape and I put them right on the edge so the holes are hanging over. So I can just theoretically just dip these in some CA and uh, put them down through the holes and just go right down the line. Now I can paint all of these a, a flat black 
Uh, I've also got some parts for a smoke jack. These are actually uh, HO scale parts from Titchy Trains. But I thought it would look uh, just right on my little caboose. With these uh, roof trim pieces that I made, the wider one actually goes here at the top of the wall underneath the arc. So, gives that a much nicer, more finished look. And then the narrower one, this one should go right here. Another small detail. Each door gets a doorknob in the form of a good old Atlas track nail. Some glue on the back. I've also uh, recently decided to consolidate all of the ON18 lines in Thunder Mesa Country under a single corporate entity known as the Big Thunder and Calico. And that way I can just freely move equipment around between the uh, Big Thunder Camp area and the, the Calico Mines, the Calico Mountain area. So I'm adding a little uh, name board up here to the top on each side. And I'll get the other one on there on the other side, and then I'll go back and touch up the edges here with the dark brown so you won't be able to see it. I've cut some... Um, black construction paper into 30 inch wide strips. Use that to uh, simulate uh, tar paper roofing. There we go. Let me burnish it down real good so you can see those boards. And the next one should overlap by about six inches using some uh, diluted uh, yellow glue for this. I'm just taking my fingernail and creating that seam right there. Where the two pieces overlap. Sprayed some of that uh, that yellow into the cup. I'm just going to use it to touch up these ends here a little bit. Pretty much right about there. Now I want to add some uh, some grab iron, some handrails, with some, uh, this is some 32 thou brass rod. You know, in one of these days I'll make a, uh, a wire bending jig. <laughs> but for now, uh, needle nose pliers work pretty well. That is such a nice look, doesn't it? I'm going to add a couple, one on each end here. I don't foresee um, having to take this thing apart to access the interior. I mean, I could be wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and glue the body onto the frame. That'll make the rest of it, putting the uh, steps and things on a little bit easier. More to hold on to. Let's apply the steps next. Now, I, uh, I did measure to make sure these were clear, but I better go check just in case. 
Yep, no problems detected. Carry on. Now just dry brushing on some grays on these steps. Bring out the the nut bolt washer castings I worked so hard to put on there. The edges of the detail make, makes it look more like metal when you do that. Now I want to add some uh, dry brushing to the roof to also to uh, make those seams stand out a little bit more. Give it the look of uh, being faded by the sun. Just using a couple of different uh, shades of gray here. On the brass handrails, I'm just using a thin, dark brown. I'm not really trying to, to paint the brass. I'm, I'm just giving it a, it's almost like a wash to make them look kind of dirty and grimy. Now I could put these couplers back on. The tiny little end scale parts. Now I'll just finish up a little bit of chalk weathering. Get some soot up here on the roof. A little bit of rust. Road grime. That's pretty good. Now I'll get a coat of uh, fix on that. This is a matte acrylic fixative. I like it better than uh, Tester's Dull Coat. Well, you know what I think? I think it's done. Let's uh, take it out for a spin. Thank you for watching that ON18 caboose build. I hope you had at least half as much fun watching it as I had making it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. You can also find out more over on my website, thundermesa.studio, where you can find uh, the latest projects, model kits from Crescent Creek Models, and my artwork. Or you can follow along on Instagram at thunder.mesa. Until next time, keep moving forward everybody, and adios for now.